Hey guys, welcome back to the TTA Performance YouTube channel. Uh, finally getting back at it. I know we haven't been on uh, with a new video in quite a while, uh, mainly because we've just been doing what I consider boring stuff. Eh, I wouldn't say boring. Not as not interesting enough to put on YouTube. So a lot of you would probably disagree, um, but a lot of it was just everyday kind of repair st stuff that we've already done video with. Um, working on customers' cars. Uh, obviously, I would make a video if I thought it, it would be something of interest and something kind of out of the normal or it's something we haven't covered yet. And we will be doing that. We do have some uh, interesting cars uh, that we're working on that there will be content on those. So sorry for me slacking, just trying to keep up with, uh, with the work coming in the door. But uh, what we're going to be working on now is I'm going to start a series here for um, a, a kind of a, a test engine or um, I, I hate using the term test mule because it's used a lot. And I want to come up with something a little bit more unique of a name than a, a test mule. But uh, basically, I've got a test engine. You've seen it before. It's an 81 uh, turbo block, but it was a non-turbo engine originally it was actually a four barrel 81 301 we did our uh head gasket test on it by converting it to a turbo so basically it had a turbo on it you saw it on the dyno we ran it up to about 14 pounds of boost but basically it was a stock 301 really nothing done to it so we've been doing some testing uh with some cylinder heads and intake manifolds and making changes and a lot of flow bench testing and stuff so basically what i want to do is I want to, we, we've got some numbers on a flow bench and that's going to be a separate video. But in the meantime, I want to put together an engine that's going to uh, be able to be dynoed again. And we're going to, we're going to test the theories that the flow bench showed and see if we can actually make more power. And we're going to be doing it naturally aspirated. So no turbo in this situation, not yet. So uh, let me turn the camera around. We're going to show you the, the engine that we're starting with. Again, you've seen it before, but I'll show you what we got going on and the mods that we're going to be making with it. So let's check that out. Okay, what we have here is the um, 81 301 non-turbo. Again, it's a turbo block, but it is a technically a four-barrel engine. So it's got flat top pistons in it. It's about eight to one compression but it was 100% stock for a computer controlled four barrel uh, engine. This, this engine had, came out of a car that had 57,000 miles on it. And unfortunately the car was, uh, was hit. It, don't worry, the car is still surviving, it's living on. Uh, it's gonna be a complete um, resto mod with a, a whole new chassis and everything under it all, Pro Touring, LS, all that stuff. But anyway, um, so what I decided to do here was we're going to do some back-to-back -back testing, but one of the first things I wanted to do was actually change the camshaft. So we're getting rid of the, the stock, um, you know, 301, 81, 301 cam, which is tiny. I think it's less than, it's definitely less than 200 thousandths, um, or sorry, it's less than 200 degrees of duration at 50 thousandths. I want to say it's somewhere around 189. Uh, at 50 thousandths lift and the lift itself at the valve this is now normally you got two different style lifts that you look at for cam specs you got lift at the cam so the lobe lift then you have to multiply that by the rocker arm ratio to get valve lift because the rocker arm actually multiplies the amount of opening so we have 1.5 ratio rockers right now that's what stock is so the actual valve lift at the valve is like 349, 349 thousands. It's not, it, it, I mean, it's not even the 400 thousands range in a stock cam. Um, so what we're doing is we're actually installing a flat tappet cam. Uh, I wanted to do this cheap. And I also want to test some theories with flat tappet cams because I know a lot of, there's a lot of stuff out there on the internet and and people having problems with flat tappet cam. So we're going to show how we put a flat tappet cam in and uh, how we break it in, uh, and hopefully it'll survive. Uh, I don't see why it wouldn't. I haven't had any issues so far, knock on wood. Um, so in the process, we bought a cheap cam. And what do I mean by cheap cam? Well, we bought a Summit 2800 cam. And a lot in the Pontiac community, 
Uh, people know what I'm talking about. Basically, that's the summit part number is the 2800 part number. Um, that is one of the smaller camshafts. You can look it up on Summit's uh, website, but basically at 50 thousandths lift, it is 204 degrees duration on the intake, 214 on the exhaust. Um, it shows that it is a 112 lobe separation angle. So uh, one of the things that I did was looking at that cam card that comes with it is that they show that the intake center line of uh, basically at what point the intake valve is at wide open um, is at 108 degrees of crankshaft. And that's why we have the degree wheel on here. So what I did was I set up everything to degree in the camshaft, check it all out. And what was kind of interesting was that it actually came in at 112, which would indicate that that is straight up whenever your lobe separation angle uh, matches your intake center line. Basically, that's zero advance of the valve timing. Don't get don't get confused with ignition timing. It's uh, advancement of the valve timing. So that the valve opening in relation to piston position. Um, normally, uh, every aftermarket camshaft out there is actually ground with the intake lobe four degrees advanced from the lobe separation angle. So um, I was kind of surprised that this one was not that way. Um, so being that we have a nine keyway adjustable um, uh, timing chain, which I'll show that after I take off the degree wheel, uh, went in, took the timing chain off, advanced the cam timing four degrees, put everything back on, Checked it again, and I had 108 and a half, or about 108, you know, plus or minus one degree is, you know, margin of error. So 108 uh, intake center line, which is what the cam card showed. Um, so that's where we're going to leave it. So we advanced the cam, and you can look up a lot of videos about advancing and retarding valve timing and how that affects the way the engine runs and, you know, all kinds of different stuff. But basically, advancing the camshaft tends to bring the power band in sooner. Um, so now with that all done, next step is we're going to install lifters. I'm going to get rid of my dial indicator, get rid of my degree wheel and everything, uh, torque everything up for the timing chain, and start installing all of the uh, lifters and valve train and stuff like that. Um, so I'll show you a few more things as we go. All right, so we got the degree wheel off. And this is what I want to show you guys. This is the nine keyway uh, crankshaft gear for the timing set. This confuses people. Uh, not everyone, but some people get a little confused by this. I'm going to show you why. So this engine right now is currently on top dead center compression stroke number one cylinder. So basically you would look at the dots. Everybody talks about the dots. So the dot here is at 12 o'clock on the cam gear. And normally the dot on here would be uh, at 12 o'clock also. So whatever's indicating at 12 o'clock right now, that is what uh, the camshaft degree is at. So if we look really close, we, we see two sets of letters, numbers, and everything. Right, right now we show A4. A4 means advanced four degrees. Okay, so there's an A4 here. Right below it is an A6. This is the keyway. If you notice, the keyway is on the A4. So the gear is on the A4 or advanced four degree keyway, but when you go to align it, you don't align the keyway. You align whatever your keyway is, you align the lettering on the teeth. So if you look over here, this is zero. This would be straight up, no advancement correction in it. And you can kind of see over here, here's the zero for the keyway. So if I was gonna install this camshaft straight up, no advancement, I would put the gear I put the key in that slot for zero and use that zero as my dot facing 12 o'clock. So right now we're advanced four. This will go to eight. It'll advance eight. It'll retard eight. There's actually, there's R8, R6, and so on. So you could actually turn the valve timing back and actually have the uh, camshaft valve timing in relation to the piston uh, later versus earlier. Uh, usually retarding the cam will tend to make the power come in later. 
anyway so we get now that we got that all detailed uh, next up we're gonna get some lifters in here all right so when it comes to lifters we've done research we've you know looked things over saw what other people were using and other manufacturers of engines you know Chrysler's Ford's whatever uh, not not only Pontiac's but um, I feel very comfortable with Johnson high lift flat tappet lifters this is their uh, flat tappet lifter you'll see and we'll kind of get a close up on there maybe you know it's got a pattern in it it's not perfectly smooth and polished talking with Johnson high lift about the lifter um, there's are 100% made in the USA from casting to grinding they said that the issues is tolerancing with lifters that are wiping out camshafts a lot of lifters that are offshore lifters uh, made in India made in Mexico whatever maybe even China um, that they're tolerancing for the crown that's in here is off and also the surface finish they said the surface finish is actually critical because it retains the oil uh, basically what the big deal is is you want this lifter to be spinning in the bore every time it goes up and down on the cam lobe the spin is critical so uh, we've already put the camshaft in and you can see we got a lot of sloppy looking grease on there well that sloppy grease is this stuff right here driven uh, racing oil uh, engine assembly grease this is what I use in all my flat tappet lifters um, I also use it in some of the assembly of the engine but not much it's mainly just for flat tappet camshafts uh, I do not put it in the bearings or anything like that I use something different for the for assembly with uh, with the bearings but um, so what I like to do is actually take a big blob of that stick it on the bottom of the lifter maybe put uh, some engine oil on the outside of the lifter actually drop it down into the bore and pretty much the weight of the lifter should allow it to slide down the bore um, we don't want to be forcing it down the bore we don't want it to get stuck jammed up anything like that because that's going to keep it from doing that rotation that we want um, so we just want to make sure all of that is taking place and that they slide in real nice and easy and there are plenty of assembly grease on there so we're going to go ahead and do that now I'm going to interject here. Um, I did not record a lot of the post lifter installation, mainly the uh, adjustment of the rocker arms, uh, the procedure for doing that, also um, how I go about first starting after a cam swap when doing a flat tappet hydraulic cam. Uh, starting with the rocker arms, in this instance, I kept the stock bottleneck rocker arm, which all 301s come with. All 301s are screw-in studs, rocker studs, from the factory, and we call it a bottleneck stud. Uh, basically, the base of the uh, rocker where the pivot ball goes is 7 16 but then it tapers and goes to a 3 8 uh, 3 8 24 thread. Um, from the factory, the rockers are not adjustable you just basically tighten and torque the nut down uh, for the rocker arm uh, being that we're doing a performance camshaft i prefer to make them adjustable uh, in this instance all i had to do was just change over the rocker nuts to a top lock style rocker nut basically the ones from a small block chevrolet work uh, and did the adjustment like a small block chevrolet and for that adjustment, uh, top dead center of number one cylinder on the compression stroke can adjust both rockers uh, on that cylinder. And you basically tighten the nut until you just feel slight drag of twisting the um, push rod. We call that zero lash. And then I give it a half a turn tighter after that just to set the preload on the on the li hydraulic lifter. Um, there's Many ways you can do it from there as to which rocker arms that you adjust. I always make sure to adjust with the lifter on the base circle of the camshaft, not on the lobe. Um, you, there's several different ways you can do it. Some people like to uh, adjust based on where the opposite valve is on, if the opposite valve is on the lobe or not. Some of them you can just run through uh, certain valves with it on top dead center of either number one or number six cylinder. Uh, another way is to do top dead center of compression stroke number one, adjust both intake and exhaust rockers, and then every 90 degrees, go to the next cylinder in the firing order. Uh, just rotate the crankshaft 90 degrees and then do the next cylinder. 
Um, multiple different ways you can look it up and see which way you would prefer if you are going to do that. After I go and adjust all the uh, rockers, um, I have the rest of the engine assembled, intake manifold, valve covers, all that stuff. The last thing to go into the engine will be the distributor. But before I put the distributor in, I will actually prime the oil pump. So I have a tool that uh, takes the place of a distributor. It spins the oil pump. I check oil pressure, maybe rotate the engine a little bit and just spin the oil pump really good just to make sure oil is getting up through the push rods and into the rocker arms and everything. And the last thing to go in before starting the engine is the distributor itself. When all is set, all I should have to do is hit the key, fire the engine up and immediately get it to about 2000 RPM is where I like to go with it. And this is the break-in procedure for the flat tap at camshaft. Bring it up to 2,000 RPM. I usually will set the timing somewhere around 36 degrees, uh, giving it good ad advancement because usually that'll not allow the engine to be laboring very hard. It'll keep things cool. It'll keep the uh, exhaust cool also. Um, and sit there and let it run for about 15 to 20 minutes maybe varying the RPM once in a while in between there. And that is the break-in procedure for the flat tap at camshafts that I use. Um, this allows to get a uh, mating polished surface between the lobe and the lifter um, and just check to make sure everything is working okay. And then shut it down from there, let it cool, start it back up, and then I can set my idle and so on. And that's how I've always done flat tap at camshaft break-ins. Um, but anyway, uh, I kind of skipped over all of that in the video, um, so we'll get back to it here, and now you can hear it run. All right, cam is in, everything's adjusted. We just got done breaking in the flat tappet cam, so far so good, uh, using our high quality Johnson lifters. Um, we'll fire it up here in a second. It actually sounds pretty good with open headers, um, but uh, Throttle response seems pretty good. Everything went well. Um, let's uh, let's fire it up here. <laughs> 